I sanctify this medium in the name of Jesus to the Holy Spirit and separate this medium now for divine purpose and divine use. That in the Holy Spirit, you will take over this medium and pass anointing and grace and power and the word of God and life through this channel in the name of Jesus. I join everyone wherever they are gathered together unto one with you and unto you. Unto the Lord shall be the garden of his people. So gathered unto you now in your power and by your anointing in the name of Jesus. I declare the Lordship of Jesus and the high priestly ministry of Jesus over this gathering. And everything that the Lord Jesus has obtained by his intercession for every person for you are our intercessor, and you ever live here to make that you are able to save to the uttermost those that have come to God by you. That power of intercession, I connect to every single person in their situation, their circumstance, wherever they are in their location. In the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, take absolute control now. We well, thank you. You're welcome to tonight's ministration again, and today we're going to start with some prayer points. In the afternoon, I, the Lord was putting some prayer points in my heart. And the first prayer point that I want us to pray is I want us to pray for a baptism of intimacy with God in these days of um, lockdown and whatever that is happening all over the world, where men are not able to do their normal business, normal activity, and they are just closeted in. I want us to take authority over every attack of demonic loneliness. Demonic loneliness is an attack of devil to steal the purpose of God for this hour. I believe the, one of the purposes of God for this kind of situation, where by force now, people are logged in. They are not doing the normal things they are doing. They are not, it's like, it's like a forced fast. Not fasting of, fasting of normal life. Fasting of work, fasting of normal things. So it's, 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 it's there. Christians must understand the purpose of God for this kind of situation. Everything, Bible say, for everything there is a purpose on the earth. For every time there's purpose, and there's a purpose for every time period. There's a there's a time to every purpose, but there's also a purpose for every time. All right, every purpose of God has a time attached to it, but there is a purpose to every time frame that we find ourselves in. So we're going to pray this to start off. Pray against every demonic attack of loneliness, where people will be coming under pressure in their mind, they, are, they feel all alone and all. But this is the time that God is drawing the attention of men and his people and the world to God. You know, you look out and every place is quiet and, and lone, nobody's moving around and things like that. Some devil want to hijack that situation to, to put panic, to put fear in the heart of people. But God has allowed it and permitted it for us to look up to him. So we're going to pray two, two sided prayer now. One is dealing with demonic attack of loneliness. And then the second one is a baptism of intimacy with God. Intimacy, a baptism of the presence of God. The Bible says, be still and know that I am God. People will begin to see and feel and sense the presence of God in ways that never had it before. God will be busy, we've been doing things our own way now. With just a little turning on to the Lord. You, you see him there. You see him there. So let's pray. If you pray for yourself for this period to move into a new season, season of, of, of intimacy with God, of discovery of the presence of God and awareness of the Holy Ghost and awareness of the Father's love, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, the, 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 the presence and the love of Jesus for you as a person. I want to pray for, for you for you and come against every attack of demonic loneliness to steal intimacy with God. I am worried. Don't do any attack of worry, attack against your mind. Pray all over the world for God's people that our the minds of you come under the anointing of God. Every attack of the enemy against the mind of anybody are rebuking. Bible says in Isaiah 26 exactly that God will keep in perfect peace whose mind is stayed upon him. At this time, the God will the God will cause the mind of every one member of church to stay upon God. If you keep looking at the news alone, your mind will stray. Your mind will get afraid and all that, but stay your mind on God. 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 And let the anointing for that, for that, for that experience to rest upon everyone in the name of Jesus. Father, take authority over every demonic attack of loneliness. 
I rebuke it in Jesus' name. Every mental challenge, I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. I speak over the minds of every single person under the sound of my voice. Let the baptism of peace, the Bible says, the peace of the Lord that passeth all understanding, shall garrison and watch over your mind like a, like a garrison of soldiers. Yeah, yeah, take charge. Let the peace of the Lord take charge of your mind. The Bible says, the chastisement of our peace was little funny. Let it be a time that your mind will be at peace quietness so that you can hear the voice of the Lord. A baptism of intimacy with the Lord in the name of Jesus. This period of lockdown will lead to new development of revelation and sensitivity of the presence of God for saints of God all over the world. And I'm praying for every member of Dream Center that this period will bring you into a new depth with God, into a new personal experience of God in the name of Jesus, where you have been enjoying friends God corporately, you will now develop a personal presence of God in your life. Personal presence of God. Personal presence of God. The personal presence of God for you, with you. You will come into an awareness of it. You will, at the end of this, you will come out knowing that God is not just with my pastor. God is not just among us. God is with me. God is with me. God is with me. I pray that that will be your experience in the name of Jesus Lord, we thank you. Rebuke every attack of demonic loneliness. I want to steal intimacy with the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, your mind to be harnessed under the power of the Holy Spirit, to focus on the Lord, to focus on the things of God. Every attack of distraction, every attack of worry, every attack of fear, in the name of Jesus, pull down stronghold. Crazy imaginations, I pull down those strange imaginations. Wrong thoughts, I cast down. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I speak life. I speak the baptism of peace, calmness upon the mind of your people. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. Do you receive that? In Jesus' name. The second prayer point we're going to pray, I want you to turn your Bibles to the book of Romans chapter 9. Romans chapter 9 and then verse 28. He said, for he will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness because a short work will the Lord make upon the earth. And then Matthew chapter 24, I want to turn the Bibles there. Matthew chapter 24, and then I'll read verse 22. Now this Matthew 24, I'll still come back to read about, to read it, to, to read it. But this place says, this concerns the day, the last days. We are in the last days, actually. What is going on, you know, you know, when you look at the, the event in the world, just look at cities, nations under lockdown. Fear all over the place. Like a spirit of hell had just come. But God is there. God is right there. When God is silent but present, the, we are facing an exam. And as God's will, we should turn our attention to him. All right? But in this particular Matthew chapter 24, describing the events of the last days, which I believe we have entered into. is like a foreshadowing of the rapture. You know, when you look at how everybody in the newspaper, the news are describing what is going on all over. Nations talking this one, they are talking about what's going on there, what's going on here, and things like that. You know, that's how the people are discussing the rapture. That's how we are going to be discussing the rapture. Very few people have seen a global in fact, I don't think there's anybody in this in their lifetime has seen a global phenomenon like this. Nobody's there. Nobody is exempt. Everywhere this thing is going on and all that. But thank God, God is in control. God is in charge. So now in this ex, ex, Matthew 24, there's a scripture that I want us to stand. It says, verse 21, for then shall be great tribulation, such as we must not since the beginning of the world to this time. No, not ever, nor ever shall be. And except those days shall be shortened, there should be no there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Now that other one, Romans 9:20, that I read says, "If we call, Lord shall make." Now the prayer point I want us to pray is to pray for a move of God over researchers, scientists. There are some. Of, I, I listened to some of the news. They say that they are looking at one year, eighteen months to find a vaccine and things like that. And then you know, some people are looking at the lockdown to be for six months, three months, whatever, and all that. I want us to pray that God will cut it short in righteousness. That the days that they are projecting will be shortened for the sake of the elect. 
for the sake of the net, that within a matter of weeks, there will be a solution that is workable. God's mercy will prevail for the sake of the elect. Let's pray. Rabbi, this thing I said, for our own sake that we are in the world, we are God's children are in the world. In the midst of this now, that for our sake, God will cut it short in righteousness. He will send an answer. He will, he will, he will release a solution. There will be a turn that will, that will be shorter than the time that the time frame that scientists and researchers are looking at in the name of Jesus. It will last more than weeks. It will not be months. It will be weeks. In the name of Jesus, it will be days, weeks. Jo do si ba ya de si de bu de brama de 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 je ba ma de 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 father that you will cut the time short in righteousness you will shorten these days for a vaccine to be found for an answer to be found to this virus for the sake of the elect in the name of Jesus this is your pattern that you you shorten the days yes Lord reba i de si masanda ye de je brama de si libra masando enda masa masanda yada. Jimbra Bama de Suindo Mutede din Siada, Jambra Masade, Indra Masuda, Indra Masadayada, Jambra Matiste Masanda, Dambra Masandi Matis Sundaria Malamasila, Andra Matisto Musudo Yudo, Jumbra Mastanda Sanda Balima, Landro Mustende Selinde Bruma Yastondo Lucindabra, Manda Listende Musende Lindistimo Sudova, Rembra Le Destele Musende Din Diede Budebra Mayara, Jimbra Bama Destede. In Jesus' name we pray. We agree together now that the days are shortened for the, for the sake of the elect. The days of discovery of a workable vaccine and solution to this matter are shortened for the sake of the elect. We agree, Lord. We are asking for mercy. We receive it in Jesus' name. The, the next prayer point I want us to pray, Psalm 34. Look at Psalm 34. Psalm 34 and verse 4. The Bible says, I sought the Lord and he had me and delivered me from all my fears. I want you wherever you are now, what is the fear that is uppermost in your heart in this situation? What are you secretly afraid of in this coronavirus days? Lay it before the Lord now. Say, I sought the Lord and he had me and deliver me from all my fears. Let the Lord deliver you from those fears now. Secret fears. Because fear will open you up to the devil. Fear will create openings for the enemy to launch attacks against you. So get rid of that fear. Mention it before the Lord now. And I'm going to pray, Father, take authority of every fear that is attacking the minds of people individually, privately, secretly. In the name of Jesus, we hand over every fear to you. We seek you according to your word and we receive deliverance from fear. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but the spirit of power, love, and of a sound mind. Every spirit of fear, every phobia, every secret fear, I bind you, I take authority over you, I eject you now in Jesus' name. You take your leave now in Jesus' name. Let the spirit of faith come. Let the spirit of faith come. Let confidence in God rise in the place of fear. In Jesus' name, Lord, we thank you for it. We we'll give you praise. We we'll give you glory. Blessed be the name of Jesus. I want you to still look at that. that that's Psalm 34. All right? Verse 5 and 6 says, They looked unto him and were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. We're looking unto him. So as we look unto God, you'll be lightened. It's time for you to look unto God to receive light, to receive inspiration to receive revelation to receive understanding to make sense out of the chaos look unto god look at i want to give you some words again tonight you know i said yesterday i was going to be teaching along the name of the lord but morning i i had to minister to some of church members that are dealing with this coronavirus on the front line overseas us uk and other and then of course there are people that had symptoms on their body and all the kind of things like that so and there are words that the Lord wants me to deal with and address today. 
So you, I'll be ministering to some words also again. Today, Psalm 34, look at verse 15. Let these words soak into your spirit. Strength in your spirit, in your soul, against every kind of news flying around. Now, while I won't say you shouldn't focus, you shouldn't read the news and listen to the news, do more of hearing the good news now. We've had all that with all that they know about coronavirus. We know that there's no virus, there's no vaccine now, there's nothing they can do and things like that. We have had testimonies and people have sent video tapes of people that have that have Google home remedy, nothing that can be done for you, and things like that. The people are turning to God. And one of the prayers I'm praying, and I want to join me to pray, is that this will turn to a massive harvest of souls for the kingdom. Because men are seeing the futility of the best of human strength. This, this, this thing is leveling everybody. It's leveling everybody, every nation, the rich nation, the poor nation, high and mighty. Can you imagine? Where wife of prime minister caught it, where poor person caught it, big man caught it, poor man caught it. So it's leveling things up. Well, you know one thing that is that made that one God wants to do wants, wants to wants to see happen is that this virus is showing the wickedness of the devil and the goodness of God. The goodness of God must come to men must see the goodness of God. Must not must not be careless and let the devil lie to men that God is God not behind the devil is behind this one. The devil is one that brought it, but God will reveal his goodness to the to the people. I say, I unless I believe to see the goodness of the Lord. You have died. I walked before the Lord, land of living, land of living. I believe to see the goodness of the Lord, so that this will turn to great salvation, great harvest of so that people, when people call on God, the confidence of man in man, the confidence of man in in man is being shaken, and what is the purpose of that shaking to come to turn into confidence in God? Self confidence must become God confidence. Let it start with you. It will happen all over the world, and I'm believing that at the end of this coronavirus crisis, you will see many, many, many people will turn to God. They will know it was God. And if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, when coronavirus rose up against families and all that, but thank God the Lord is there. The Lord is there. Many people that don't know God will come to God through this situation. But I believe that this is a signal for what is to come, and that we pray that the world will take heed. In mercy, I believe that this is a this is a this is a, this is a dress yaza for other things that are coming. Okay, I will still read Matthew 24 for you, but look at Psalm 34 and look at verse 15. The Bible says, The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open unto their cry. That is for you. If you're born again, the eyes of the Lord are upon you, and his ears are open to your cry. Verse 17, the righteous cry. And the Lord hear it. This time for you to pray and develop strength and confidence in the power of prayer. You are going to find God real in this season. It says the Lord, the righteous cry, and the Lord hear it and deliver them out of all their trouble. It's not just hearing prayer, it's delivering. So let that be your confidence. Look at Psalm verse 19 of that passage. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them, not out of some of them out of them all. So we're going to have deliverance out of every situation that comes now. Verse 20, he keepeth all his bones, not one of them is broken. Look at verse 22, the Lord redeemed the soul of his servant, and none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. You shall not be stranded, you shall not be desolate in this season because you trusted in God. Those are promises from Psalm 34. But I want you to just look at something in the book of um, Ma, 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 Matthew. 24. Let's go back to that because it, it just struck me this um, afternoon that this is not a situation that we should just look at from the secular, from the physical law. Matthew 24, if we look at it from verse 32, okay? Um, you see some, look at, look at it from verse 1, Matthew 24. I'll read from verse 2 and just don't, uh, I'll still teach along this line during this 30 days, but let me just point some things to you. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. 
Verily I see unto thee, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Now, most by biblical um, teachers and preachers, that are doing end time prophecies teaching. They get the many, many people don't get this verse three right. There are three questions that they ask him here. When shall these things that you are talking of in verse two, when shall they be? All those things that they said in verse two, they happened in 78 when Angel and Titus came to Jerusalem and did pull down the walls and all that. And the temple bullied it and everything. But then they said the second question was, and what shall be the sign of thy coming? And then what shall be the sign of the end of the world? Two things I mentioned there. The, what shall this thing be that was just spoken of? And what shall be the sign of your coming? And what shall be the sign of the end of the world? So those are three questions that he answered now. So if you are going to get any sense out of this Matthew 24, you must know the three questions. And then look at verse 4. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take it that no man deceive you. As the first thing, because there will be a lot of deceptions in these last days. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, I am anointed, and shall deceive men. We're living in those days now. All kind of strange prophets and all kind of names, all kind of crazy things. There's a prophet that he said he sleeps with his church members on the pulpit, on the altar. Has he God told him to sleep with them so that they can be prosperous? Or lie down with women, as women on the altar. That he said, many shall come in my name, say, I'm anointed. There's a woman that said God has anointed a private part to stick with women so that they can be fertile. All these are crazy days that they are crazy prophets and those they, they claim to be anointed. So we are living the days of this prophecy. And what I should do for you is that it should give you confidence that the Bible has spoken about this thing. The prophecy of the scripture is what you are living in. They, they, we, are, we are the generation that is seen prophecies happening in our day. Look at what it says again. And ye shall hear wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. He said, see that you don't be troubled. That's where people fail. They get troubled. Now, the reason why he's saying that, see that you don't be troubled. Because he said, you will hear of it. Wars and rumors of war. You know, somebody was saying that um, the, all the war, there should be a compulsory ceasefire of all conflict and let everybody face the main enemy of the human race now, coronavirus. All those other conflicts are there. For example, there are people that are listening that are, there are other challenges in their body apart from coronavirus. Those ones are still there. But look at wars and rumors of war. See that you be not troubled for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. That's the end. That's the third question. It's not yet. So don't think the end, the end is yet. The end is when after it comes for the church, after the rapture and all that. But look at verse Seven, for nation shall rise against nation. That is happening now. Ethnic groups, the word nation is ethnos. Ethnic groups that I pray is that this particular coronavirus, this lockdown, and things that will not degenerate into racial tensions. All right? The devil would want to get maybe ethnic groupings fighting each other again. And look at what it says here. And kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. And this is what I wanted to see. Pestilences and earthquakes in different places. We have heard of earthquakes, but we've not heard of a pestilence that is has a global spread like this one. But this should encourage you that if the Bible has spoken about it, the Bible also must have an antidote, must have a provision for us, God's people, in those days for those things. Is that okay? One of the things that I see in this place is this. The Lord said in that place, uh, let's read for that. All these are the beginning of sorrows, the, the bath pangs, you know, like a woman is falling to labor. Labor is building up gradually. It's not The baby is not yet coming, but bath pangs, the, the thing that push the nations to ask for desire of our nation, Jesus Christ. Look how it says here, and then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. Many false prophets shall arise, and shall deceive many. We're living in those days now. Look at 
And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the, shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel, the prophet stand in the holy place, who so did they let him understand. Now remember, I said there are three questions that, is, uh, that they asked him. When shall this thing be? When shall what are the signs of your coming and what the sign of the end? These are all embedded in these answers. I'm not doing an exposition of that tonight. I just want to pick um, some points for you here in this in this passage. Because Jesus, when you see all these things begin to happen, then know that it is very clear. Look at verse 32. Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When the branches is yet tender and put it forth leaves, ye know that summer is near. So likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the door. Then here I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. This was the passage that struck me this afternoon. Can it be that our generation that is seen a global virus, a global shutdown, all can you imagine? Nations are shut down, borders are closed, everybody not going anywhere. No generation has seen this kind of a thing. Nobody has heard of it in recent history or whatever. Could it be that this generation that is seeing this will not pass away before Jesus comes? Could it be that Jesus is going to come back in our generation? Can you believe that? Can you believe that in the next, maybe in the next 20, 30 years, I'm not certain that don't put anything, don't put it, but this generation, there's a particular generation that is talking that we will see all these things that is prophesied here. Could this be our generation? Let that just be at, your, at the back of your mind as we go into the world tonight that the rapture, what if it's a generation that will see the rapture? So, must be living conscious of that fact that it will soon come. That you know, they talk of the Bible is fiction and things like that. But he said pestilences, not just pestilence, pestilences. Is there still going to come another one after this one? All right. But Ebola came, some other came before. This one has come. The generation shall not pass until. They see the coming of the so let's leave that one by for another day. So I was talking the morning uh, that the words that are flying around when I look at um, the word exposure. The second word is the word vulnerable. The third word is compromised. They talk of exposure. Uh, people have been exposed and the exposure to this virus and things like that. Then the second one is vulnerable people that and then talk of compromised immunity, underlying health conditions and things like that. I said, Lord, I want you to give you scriptures that deal with these three words so that you can hold on to it. I ministered to some of our members that are on the front line that are actually treating people that are had that are that are already a coronavirus positive. And they've been afraid. I remember one yesterday I made some the, 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 Lord, the Lord came through with some words. Okay, and that is what I love. The word is our shield in this season. The word of God is our defense in this season. The word of God is our protection. The, a consistent, intelligent, and persistent confession of the word of God is what creates the shield of faith around you that quenches all the fairy darts of the enemy. All right? So look at the word exposed or exposure. We are not exposed. Neither are we going to suffer any exposure because we are the hidden ones. Say it. I am not exposed. Neither will I suffer any exposure to coronavirus because I am one of his hidden ones. God said that yesterday and he, he, he is putting it back in my spirit to re-emphasize it 
and deal with it. So I'm dealing with the first word, expose and exposure. And the word is hidden ones. Hidden ones, the Lord hides, the Lord that hides, the Lord that keep. That must be strengthened in your spirit tonight. You are not exposed. Neither will you suffer any exposure because you are one of his hidden ones. So let's look at the scriptures again. Psalm 83 verse 3. Psalm 83 verse 3. If you're a doctor, if you're a nurse on the front line, whatever, or you are traveling and moving around, you are just hold on to the word. We will not suffer any exposure because we are his hidden ones. Psalm 3 verse 3, look at what it says. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. Against thy hidden ones. I'm going to give you scriptures that tell you you are one of his hidden ones and he hides you. He hides me. He hides me. You know, I, there's a song that I, I, I got early, early in the year or later. The, a wonderful Savior is Jesus, my Lord. Wonderful Savior to me. We hide my soul in the cleft of the rock. Where rivers of pleasures I see. He hides my soul in the cleft of the road that shadows of his law and covers me there with his hands. And covers me there with his hand. I wish I can sing with a, with a music voice, but I want you to sing that song over and over. Wonderful Savior, he hide it also. So I'm going to give you those scriptures again. So beginning with Psalm 3, verse 3, you are one of his hidden ones. Declare it, you are one of his hidden ones. You will not suffer an exposure. You will not be exposed. Neither will you experience an exposure. We are not exposed. Neither will we face an exposure, no matter who, no matter how, in the name of Jesus, we are one of his hidden ones. This coronavirus never find us, never locate, never connect us, <laughs> because we are his hidden ones. That's what he says here. Now look at the book of Job chapter 5. I'll give you those scriptures again tonight. The, the God is emphasizing these scriptures for your sake, and especially those of you that you are on the front lines, now, we, you don't know. You don't even know who you know because some some nations are doing correct contact tracing. Some are not doing. But in the midst of all that, God is faithful. In the midst of all that, God knows His own. God hides His own and hides us. He hides us and covers us with His hands. All right. Look at Job five, and I'm reading from verse twenty one. Job five. Look at verse nineteen. He shall deliver thee in six troubles. Yea, in seventh there shall no evil touch you. In famine he shall redeem thee from death, and in war from the power of the sword. All the attendant challenges that will come with this coronavirus lockdown or whatever, you will not be touched or harmed in any way. Whether there's a lockdown that lasts long or short, you will have enough to eat. You be protected, be supplied for, you be provided for, you will in the name of Jesus. Look at what it says in verse 21. Thou shalt be hid from the scourge of the tongue, neither shall thou be afraid of destruction when it cometh. This is a destruction that has come. God said we shall not be afraid. Why will we not be afraid? Because we are his hidden ones. He has hidden us already. He's not just going to, he has hidden us. He has hidden you. Say he has hidden me. He has, there's a supernatural shield and a divine shield that is hiding and has hidden us. All right? Now look at what it says in verse 22. Um, why would laugh? Because you are hiding. You are, for example, you know, imagine you are driving on a, on a road and uh, there is um, a pool of water in front and a car just 
splashes water, you are in a car field, you are in the AC, AC in your car is on, and the glass are up. You know, sometimes when you're driving and the, and the water just splash, you, coming through, you perform some dodge your head, but the, you are shielded, the, the glass is shielding you. The water can get to you. I believe God, no matter how you are shielded. Say, I'm shielded. Say, I am one of his hidden ones. Say, I'm one of his hidden ones. I'm shielded. I'm covered. Yeah. Look at what it says again. At destruction and famine, you shall laugh. Neither shall thou be afraid of the beast. We are afraid of it because we are his hidden ones. He has hidden from it. He can't find us. He look around. Look around, look around, can't find us. The God that hid the light that he had, the traveled the light in Israel, is hiding us. And your tabernacle in peace, and thou shalt find nothing amiss. All right? This is very important. Look at Psalm 17. Verse 8. I'm giving these scriptures again. Some of these scriptures I gave them yesterday. This is a re emphasis. It means this God is God is making a protection double layer. Psalm 17, verse 8. Look at what the Bible says there. Keep me as the apple of the eye, hide me under the shadow of thy wings from the wicked that oppress me, from the deadly, from my deadly enemies who compass me about. Hide me under the shadow of thy wings. That's where you are hidden. The shadow of his wings. Have you seen a mother in that cold when there is storm or something? Like that, he gathers the cheeks under under his under his wings and sit on and cover them. Are you imagining the Lord covering you supernaturally and physically? And I read from verse um, 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? I want you to underline for those of you that you are vulnerable because you are not vulnerable because the Lord is your strength. Say I'm not vulnerable because the Lord is the strength of my life. Yeah. And say of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and they fell. Though an host shall encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war shall rise against me, in this will I be confident. Why will you be confident? Because of what is about to say. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, and behold, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire his temple. This verse 4 is what I believe is God's purpose out of all these lockdowns. A time that God has given us like a forced vacation to face to, to just enjoy Him, to build a, a new relationship with God. Don't worry about what's going to happen, what is happening outside. We are praying that God will call the time short for them to discover a vaccine for coronavirus. We are praying that God's anointing and healing power will move and protection over His people. So you just take this time to develop a new degree of work with God, a new intimacy with the Lord, to research in His presence. Take this time of lockdown to study the word of God. Take this time of, of lockdown to, to catch up with your fellowship with the Father, to catch up with your Bible study, to catch up with your study in God. I mean, of course, you do many other things. But let this be this foundation. Don't build your, your relationship with God around your schedule. Build your schedule around your relationship with God. Rearrange the order of your life. Let the foundation, your, your relationship with God be the foundation, be the, the core of your life, the center of everything, that every other thing is coming through. Marriage is shooting from there like a line. Um, business shooting from that. Career is shooting from that. Relationship, everything is, is like like a hub. Let let the hub be the relationship, your relationship with God. That's what verse that, Psalm 37, verse, uh, Psalm 27, verse 4 is saying. But look at what it says in verse 5. That's where I'm going. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. I want you to say it after me. For in the time of trouble, the, the Lord hides me in his pavilion. In pavilion. Yeah. In the secret of his tabernacle, of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. 
So the Lord is hiding you. I want to take note of that. I'm dealing with the first word, exposed or exposure. These are scriptures against that. So don't join them to say you, are, you can suffer an exposure or you are, like, you are exposed. No. Tell them the Lord has hidden me in this in the secret of his pavilion. You are hidden. Look at Psalm 31 and verse Psalm 20. Psalm 31 verse 20. Thou shalt hide them. Let me read from verse 19 so you can get um, the full people. Oh, how great is thy goodness with us laid up for them that fear thee with us wrought for them that trust in thee before the sons of men oh may god show you some goodness before the sons of men thou shalt hide them in the secret of thy presence from the pride of man thou shalt keep them secretly in a pavilion from the strife of tongues that's what the lord shall hide you and keep you this is a supernatural experience that manifests physically all right, just as it keeps you that wicked eyes will not see you, the Lord will blind the eyes of spiritual forces from seeing you. This corona virus, the Lord has hidden you from. You are hidden. You are not exposed. All right. Look at Psalm 119. Okay, Psalm 32, first one. Psalm 32 and verse seven. Thou art my hiding place. Oh, I love this. Thou art my hiding place. Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Thou shalt compass me about with songs of deliverance. Say, thou art my hiding place. Thou shalt preserve me from coronavirus. Thou shalt compass me about with songs of deliverance. The Lord is your hiding place. All right, don't forget that. Put that in your mouth. Don't follow them to say negative things. Psalm 119, Psalm 119, verse 114. Psalm 119 and verse 114. Look at what the Bible says there. Thou art my hiding place and my shield. I hope in thy word. Thou hiding place. Let me hear you say it. Thou art my hiding place. And my, and my shield, I hope in thy word. In thy word. That's it. My, the word I hope in your word is that I expect your word to come to pass for me. My expectation comes from the word. Your expectation is not coming from the circumstances and situation. That, uh, if you are listening only to what men are saying at this time, you will develop negative expectation. Don't let anybody tell you and say, those of you that are 65 and above, you are, you, are, you are in a very compromised situation. Don't have that expectation. Have your expectation from the word of God. Let your expectation come from the word of God. The Lord is your hiding place and is your shield. All right? Keep, keep, your, keep your mind on the word of God because our expectation comes from the word. Our expectation does not come from predictions of men, does not come from the speculations of men. Our expectation comes from the Lord. Amen? Look at Isaiah 32. Isaiah 32. Giving you this word tonight. Verse 2, and a man shall be as a hiding place from the wind, and a covert from the tempest, as the rivers of water in a dry place, and as the shadow of the green, a, a, a hiding place from the wind, this wind of evil. Lord is a hiding place and a covert from the tempest. When the tempest is blowing, you know, people hide, people run to a place that is shed. Lord is our shelter, our supernatural shelter, from coronavirus, the the, 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 the the virus that caused this COVID disease. The Lord is our shelter from the virus and from the disease. Sir. He's our divine shelter. And I and I, I, I inaugurate that shelter over you afresh, over your family, over your house, over your body, over your journey, over your movement. In the name of Jesus, thou art our shelter from this operation of hell. Look at Isaiah 49. Isaiah 49. Look at verse 1. Listen, O eyes, unto me, and hearken ye people from far. The Lord has called me from the womb. Say it after me. The Lord has called me from the womb. From the bowels of my mother has he made mention of my name. And he has made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand has he hid me. Look at that. There's a supernatural shadow of the hand of God covering you and made me a sharp, a polish sharp. Say, it. Lord has made me a polish sharp. In his quiver as he hid me. 
So you are a hidden one. You are not an exposed one. You are a hidden one of God. You are a hidden one by God. You are not an exposed one. You are a hidden one. Look at Jeremiah chapter 38. Thirty-eight and verse twenty. Uh, uh, let me see. Jeremiah thirty-six. Jeremiah thirty-six, verse twenty-six. This is a very powerful revelation. <laughs> they were looking for Jeremiah. He said, but the king commanded Jeremiah, Jer- Jer- the son of Hamelech, and Seraiah, the son of Azrael, and Shelemiah, the son of Abdil, to take Baruch, the scribe, and Jeremiah, the prophet. But the Lord hid them. And, oh, I declare by the Lord, we hide you. The Lord hide you. No matter the evil command from hell behind this coronavirus, but the Lord hides us. The Lord hid them and they couldn't find them. The Lord hid them. This that are the diseases because in the exposed to the Lord, exposed or exposure. You are not exposed, you will not experience an exposure to coronavirus because the Lord hides you. Put it in your mouth before you go out, put it in your mouth where you are where you are alone, where you are moving around, put it in your hand. You thought many things, do whatever. Practice all the wisdom step that they told you and all that, that we have said it, but keep the word of God in your mouth. Our expectation is from the word. Our expectation is from the word. Look at Colossians 3. Colossians 3. Colossians 3, verse 2. The Bible says there, set your affections on the things above, not on things on the earth. For, for ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. Your life is hid with Christ in God. Say, my life is hid with my Christ life in God. Is with Christ in God. Look at my life is hid with Christ in God. Something has to take you take Christ out of God. To take Christ out of God to deal with God. Take Christ out of God to get at you and then take the Holy Ghost out of you. Oh, we and our life is hid with Christ in God. Your children are hid with Christ in God. Just declare this word. Yeah, you are you are you are you are hid with Christ in God. John chapter 8. Look at John chapter 8. John chapter 8. John chapter 8 and verse 59. This is, they wanted to take Jesus and Jesus hid himself. Then took the up stones to cast at him, but Jesus hid himself. Wow. And went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. They, they took stones to stone him on the pulpit, and they passed through the midst of them, and they couldn't see him. This same Jesus is hiding you. No evil shall find you. No evil shall befall us because he hides us. He hides us. He hides us. He hides us us from all this evil in the name of Jesus. Look at Isaiah 4. We read it yesterday and this one is coming again today dealing with these two words. When you hear exposed or exposure, tell them I'm a hidden one. As you go to your work, as you move around, as you interact, just keep the social distance, all the things that they said you should do. Do every natural thing. God will do for us supernaturally what we cannot do naturally. All right? God will do for us supernaturally. And this is what is doing supernatural hiding. All right? Look at Isaiah chapter 4, verse 5. And the Lord will create upon every dwelling place of Mount Zion. And upon assemblies, a cloud and smoke by day, and the shining of a flaming fire. By night. 
for upon all the glory shall be a defense, be your shield. You know, what was on the throne, and David was before him and uh, playing the harp, and Saul took the javelin and threw the javelin at David. And he missed David not once, not twice, not thrice. And the Bible said Saul became afraid of David from that day. You know why? The tribe of Benjamin. In Israel, to, to split some, and he saw something deflect the javelin. Not once, not twice. He couldn't believe it. There was something invisible around David that was deflecting the javelin. There was something around David that was deflecting the javelin. So they saw, saw, saw it. He was afraid of it. And this is the same glory of God that is your defense. When something, when you have a defense, you know, it's like, for example, the, 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 the immunity, the, 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 the vaccine is going to come, but we believe that the time is going to be short. We are praying, I, I want to keep praying that prayer, that God's going to cut it short. He's going to cut the time short for the sake of the elect on, the, on this earth. They will, they, will, they will find the vaccine in a time that will shock everybody. Even the scientists will wonder how, how could we find the vaccine so fast? Because prayer is going on. God is intervening. All right? But no, take note of this, that in the meantime, the glory of God will be your defense. It will deflect every way from you. Between you and any, any evil, the glory of God is an invisible shield, like a film that is impossible for any evil, like a film that is impossible for any evil. When I see the, the frontline responders that are wearing this uh, protective shield, thank God for it. But even though some, some of them, some of those wearing those, they're still penetrated. But I'm praying over those of you that you are on the front line and every other one of every child of God, the glory of God that is impenetrable for evil will be your shield, will be your defense in the name of Jesus. So declare that the glory of Lord is my defense. The glory of Lord is my defense. And the Bible says there, and there shall be a tabernacle for a shadow in the daytime from the heat and for a place of refuge and for a covert from the storm and from the rain. A covert is a place, a hiding. You know, in those days, when, when, they, when the rain from you, go into a, a cave. And until the rain passes, until the storm passes, you know, they are shielded there. In, this storm will pass, but we have a covert. The glory of the Lord is our covert. Just cover us, just shield us. And then the thing blows off, we get up, we continue our life. We'll see on the other side of coronavirus, victorious and smiling in the glory of God. Isaiah 25, look at verse 4. He said, For thou hast been a strength to the poor, a strength to the needy in his distress, a refuge from the storm, a shadow from the heat, when the blast of the terrible ones is as a storm against the wall. Oh, I love this one. He said, Thou shalt bring down the noise of strangers as the heat in a dry place. Even the heat, how does it bring it with the shadow of a cloud? No, sometimes when the sun is very hot, a shadow just come, a cloud just come, create a, 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 a shield between the sun and, 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 the, and, 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 the, and the person. That's how God does it. It's, it's, you understand that? The branch of the terrible ones shall be brought low. And saying, this mountain shall the Lord of us make unto all people a feast of fat things, a feast of wines on the least, of fat things full of marrow, of wines on the least, well refined. So this time, this time of lockdown, let the Lord make a feast of fat things for you from the word of God. Don't say, don't, don't take this time to sit down in your home and worry and say, Lord, what's going to happen when it's going to take this time to enjoy God. God is walking outside. God is dealing with it. God is baptizing and working on the mind of the scientists to, to get a solution and bring it out. God is giving you supernatural shielding and covering. Look at what it says again. Let me read it to you. For thou has been a strength to the poor. Is your strength a strength to the needy in his distress? 
Anyone that has compromised immunity, God is the strength of your immunity. I prayed for you the other time. I'm going to pray it again today. I say it over you that you have divinely anointed immune system, divinely enhanced, divinely enhanced immune system in the name of Jesus. Now let's go to the next word that God wants me to deal with vulnerable. Say, I am not vulnerable. I am impregnable. Say, I am not vulnerable. I am impregnable. What is the key word that the Lord wants me to give you on this one? You are not vulnerable. You are impregnable. Look at 1 Kings chapter 18. 1 Kings chapter 18. 1 Kings chapter 18 and then look at verse, um, verse 44. And it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, Behold, there ariseth a little cloud out of the sea, like a man's hand. And he said, Go up, say unto Ahab, Prepare thy chariot, and get thee down, that the rain stop thee not. And it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with clouds and wind, and there was a great rain. And Ahab wrote and went to Jezreel. Look at verse 46. This is what is going to happen to you. Anyone that say because of age or because of underlying health condition and things like that. Here is the word of the Lord. You see, and the hand of the Lord was upon Elijah. And he gathered up his noise and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jericho. Now, if you look at that scripture on the surface, we'll get the picture. The chariot of the kings, the, the chariot of the king has the best, strongest, fastest horses in the land that draw it. Okay? And Elijah said, you get up now, king, and run to Jezreel. And the chariot of the king began to run so that the rain would not meet them on the road. And suddenly, the hand of God came upon Elijah, a man on foot, outran chariot drawn by the best horses. Ah, the hand of God is coming upon you. The hand of the God of the Lord coming upon your spirit, coming upon your mind, coming upon your body, coming upon your immune system in the name of So don't say you are vulnerable anymore. You are impregnable because the hand of the Lord is coming upon you. Every, every, every organ in your body that has not been functioning well before, let the hand of God come upon you in Jesus' name. Your blood pressure to normalize your heart to beat well, your lungs to be perfectly sound and whole, your kidneys to function well, your liver to function well, your bones to function well. In the name of Jesus, the hand of the Lord, the hand of the Lord come upon you. That is the word. So instead of saying we are vulnerable, no, say the hand of the Lord is upon my organ. The hand of the Lord is upon me. The hand of the Lord causes you to operate beyond normal, beyond the ordinary. In the name of Jesus, you are not vulnerable, you are the defended. You have a defense of God. You have the shield of God. Jehovah Nisi is your strength, is your captain, is your Lord. The third word that, that we're dealing with is compromised immunity. And the key word for this is strength. The Lord is your strength. Look at Isaiah 41. The Lord is your strength. The Lord is the strength of your immunity. Isaiah 41, verse 10. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed from thy God. I will strengthen thee. Say amen to that. Amen. Amen. Yea, I will help thee. Yeah will help your immunity. Divinely assisted immunity in the name of Jesus. Yeah, I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. So don't let fear strike your heart because you are aged. Alright? The Lord will assist you. The Lord will strengthen your immune system. Strengthen you in your old age. Alright? Strengthen you in this day. And whether you're a young man too, don't depend on the arm of the flesh. Depend on God. I would say the young men shall fail and fail and utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord, they shall exchange their strength. So the key word in this one, when they, when they say, oh, maybe hey, you, are, you, are, you are old and this and all that, tell them, I have exchanged my strength with that of the Lord. I have the strength of the Lord. Jesus went to Calvary for you so that you can have the strength. He took our weakness. You took his strength. So you must take hold of that word. 
Don't join them to say you have compromised immunity. You have strengthened immunity in the name, even in old age. You have strengthened immunity in the name of Jesus. So it says, I will help thee, and ye I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. He will uphold you with the right hand of righteousness. Okay? The Lord will uphold you. The Lord will strengthen you and strengthen your immunity supernaturally. While you do all the things that he said you should do, okay, isolate yourself, do this, but don't let fear strike you. Let the word of God come upon you in the name of Jesus. I cause every debilitating disease, every sickness, every demonic spirit behind sicknesses that is hiding from detection. I pronounce judgment on you in Jesus. Then I cause cancer, I cause diabetes, I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Let the healing power of Jesus move through this channel. Jehovah Rapha, go into operation. You sent your word and healed them and deliver them from their destruction. Everyone that is having any underlying health condition or whatever, I speak the word of life, the word of healing, the word of deliverance. Let the healing power move in your body, move in your bones, move in your joints, move in your tendon, move in every, every diagnosis. Let there be a divine deliverance in the name of Jesus. The angels of God are operating the healing ministry and dispatch you to go forth now in the name of Jesus and begin to walk and walk and walk and rot healing. Undo what Satan has wrought. Every condition that has the spirit behind it that does not allow medicine to work or even let the condition be discerned and seen by medical instrument. I take authority right now, spirit, I rebuke you and command that thing to shut down. In Jesus, name, let the divine reversal overtake in every satanic process. In Jesus' name, and let your health spring back to soundness. In Jesus' name, remember your case is different. Say, My case is different. I am a hidden one of God, I am impregnable, I'm not vulnerable, I am not compromised, I am strengthened in my immunity. Look at Romans 8, 11. Because the spirit of him that raised Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised Jesus from the dead will also quicken your mortal body by his spirit that dwell inside you. You have divinely quickened immunity. You have divinely quickened organs and systems in your body. Put that in your mouth in the name of Jesus. Look at Hebrews 11, 11. The Bible says there, through faith also, Sarah herself receives strength. That's the word, strength. You receive strength tonight. Strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. Judge God faithful who had promised. You receive strength through faith. Okay, the word of God is what gives you strength. And that strength is coming to your system now. That strength comes to your system. In the name of Jesus, I pray for every one of you that you are involved in the medical field and the handling cases that are volatile and dangerous. I pray a baptism of divine accuracy, a baptism of the healing power of Jesus to work with you, a shield of God around you. Every single son, daughter of Dream Center hearing and listening to the sound of my voice today, I inaugurate over you the tabernacle of safety, the tabernacle of protection in the name of Jesus. You are the hidden walls of God. You are not exposed. You will not suffer an exposure to coronavirus in the name of Jesus. As you move about your daily duties, keeping whatever you are do, do, go, go around your work, you will not be exposed, neither will you suffer an exposure. You are not vulnerable, you are impregnable. In the name of Jesus, you are not compromised. You are strengthening your immunity. In the name of Jesus, your case is different because of the covenant you carry. Your case is different because of the blood that speaks better things than the blood of Abel. Your case is different because of the Holy Ghost that is operating inside for it. It is God that worketh in you to will and to do of your good pleasure, of his good pleasure. 
your case is different because of the high priestly ministry of Jesus that is interceding for you. Look at what the Bible says concerning the high priestly ministry of Jesus in Hebrews chapter 7 for you as a child of God. Hebrews chapter 7, look at verse um, um, 25. Wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that are come unto God by him. May I ask you, have you come to God by him? Yes. If you have come to God by him, the Bible says Christ is able also to save you to the uttermost, seeing that he ever lived to make intercession for you. Oh, wonderful. He ever lived to make intercession for us. It was the intercessory ministry of the high priest in the Old Testament that kept Israel in the fellowship of the covenant and the benefit of the covenant kept flowing and flowing for them. And they, those high priests could not continue because they, they are men, they died, they make mistakes and all that. So they, there was a break in the experience of their benefit, but this, this one ever live it. Jesus ever live it, ever live it. And I pray over every one of you listening to the sound of my voice today that the fruit of the intercessory ministry of Jesus, because no matter what is going on in the world, Jesus is not interceding for you and I before the Father. Everything that Jesus has interceded for you as a person, in concerning this coronavirus, let the intercession, the result of that intercession, let it overtake your life. You know, he said to Peter, I prayed for you that your faith fail not. And the faith of Peter did not fail. He bounced back. He didn't say that concerning Judas. He just said one of his is a devil. Peter bounced back because he enjoyed the intercession ministry of Jesus. Now that intercession is working for you and I. That intercession is added to your life. Everything that Jesus intercessed, he ever live it to me. He says he's able to save. The word save there is sozo, deliver, make some, make whole, prosper, make you escape the uttermost. Because he ever, ever live it to make intercession for you. May you enjoy that intercession in a new way, in the name of Jesus. Your case is different because you have an intercessor that ever live it. Never tires, never, never give up. He keeps on interceding and interceding. And, and the intercession of God brings interruptions of God against the work of them, brings interception into your life. That intercession of Jesus will not allow you to go out on a wrong day, to move, to go to a wrong place. You will not meet the wrong person. Your path and that of distrust will never cross. Your path and that of any carrier of coronavirus will never cross. In the name of Jesus, let me declare it again. Your path and that of any carrier of coronavirus will never cross because of the intercession of Jesus. In Jesus' name, Lord, we thank you. Father, we give you praise, we give you glory. I release the blessing of God upon you. Tonight again, it is well with you. I'm sure you're blessed. Let the word of God mantle around you and walk in the reality of this word. Remember those three words again. You are the hidden one of God. You are impregnable and you are strengthened in your immunity in the name of Jesus. And your case is different because of the intercession of Jesus, because of the blood that speaks in them, because of the leadership and direction of the Holy Spirit, because of the ministry of angels, because of the love of the Father. Oh, what is working for you is much more superior than anything they can bring against you. We have the victory. See you on the other side of coronavirus. In the name of Jesus, the Lord will cut it short for us. He will make it, will, will reduce the time that you'll find a blessing that work. Our prayer is working that in the meantime, the glory of God is our defense, the glory of God is our shield, the glory of God is our defense. Every other evil that is going on around, the God devil likes to distract attention, and we are shielded against it. In the name of Jesus, we are shielded against it. We are shielded against it. You are. Robbers will not come near you, kidnappers not cross paths with you. Your path and that of the for one life, nobody will cross paths with you, no evil. In the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you. We give you praise, we give you glory. We bless your holy name. Jesus, we worship you. We thank you. Let me sing that song again over you. A wonderful Savior is Jesus, my Lord. A wonderful Savior to me. He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock, where rivers of pleasure I see. 
He hideth my soul in the cleft of the Lord. The shadows are dry, thirsty land. He hideth my life in the depths of his flock and covers me there with hands and covers me there with his hands. He covers you there with his hands. He's one that told Moses, there's a place by me. And you stand upon the rock, I'll hide you with my hand. All right? This tongue will pass away, and we'll move on with our lives. Mm-hmm. Better and stronger and healthier, more anointed, wealthier, mm-hmm. holier, on the other side of coronavirus. Glorifying God. Depopulating hell and populating heaven. So shall it be for you, in Jesus' name. You're blessed, in Jesus' name. We've got an answer, 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 answer from heaven, my answer, my answer.